on Do You Burn? That's why I'm taking you to the dark. Shit! You ever been just sitting around thinking about life? Thinking about what you've done out there on the run? Thinking about how you'd like to tell the whole Yay, yay. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We all clap for ourselves here on KW Judas. This is probably the third, maybe fourth, functional show that we've had in our new series that we've been trying to launch here this summer. And we have one way only. Uh, coming down from Salt Lake. Yes, yeah, Salt Lake City. And K-Town. You guys have known each other for quite some time. Too long. Too fuck. Too <laughs> effing long. <laughs> too effing long. Uh, we're like five <laughs> minutes into it, and I already <laughs> almost effed up. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've known each other since high school, most of us. Um, these guys knew each other. Mike and Jamie knew each other in high school, and me and Pat knew each other in high school, and we were about, what, two years ahead? Three years yeah, ahead. there's there's about a two year difference. Yeah. So, you guys formed this band clear back in high school. Actually, uh, no, actually, no we're I, talking about uh, Mike. I started this band back in I started this band back in '92. Oh, really? Um, with a couple of different other guys, and I hadn't been talking to Mike for a while, and then just out of the blue, we met at a convenience store getting some beers and started talking about he's playing drums again, and I went from playing guitar to bass and. I needed a drummer and brought him in and then brought in the vocalist and we had another guitar player for a little bit and uh, had to kick him out and yeah, brought Jamie in and did that for about two years. And, and I wasn't even going to sing. That wasn't going to be the thing. I came down just to watch these guys and they had another, a, a mutual friend of ours was, was going to sing and um, these guys are putting together some good stuff. They had three or four really good songs already put together. And I'm sitting there looking at the lyrics, and the dude that was going to sing wouldn't get up to the mic. He would just ah. kind of stand there. And so... He's mic shy. He exactly. was... He was he had, yeah, he wasn't going to do So I asked him to get up there and see what he could do, and did that for about two years, and then we all decided to start raising families for a bit. And right. Got back together, what, about two years ago? and Two years ago this month. Been banging it since. So as far as July. the whole... I guess timeline of that. I mean, you say you started the band in high school under well, the no, same no, no. title. No, not in high school. Back in '92. So I was in high school in the '80s. So right, right, okay. Yeah, so did you guys still play music in high school? I played guitar. Me and him actually started playing guitar together back in high school. So oh, cool. Yeah. And then, um, how long of a break did you guys take? Uh, Twenty years. Twenty-three years, I think. Twenty-three uh, years. Twenty-two years. Twenty-two years. Well, we were out in the desert playing, me and Pat. We were out there with our four-wheelers playing and getting drunk and having fun. And 
sitting around the fire, and, th- and he shows me his phone. He's all, check this out. And it's Mikey and Jamie jamming to one of the old songs. And I recognized it straight off. I was like, that's, that's huh. one way only crap. Right? right on. That's cool. And they, so it's, they started begging us to, hey, come on down and jam. We're like, ah, it's just a joke kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, can we, we still do we it? We went down and said, hey, all right, so we'll just do it for fun as a hobby. And then we just said, okay, screw it. Let's get out and start playing some bars and have some fun. Yeah, why not? 22 years. And I the mean, old stuff came together pretty quick because we just kind of remembered it all. So is this all older material or have you guys been writing yeah, new all stuff? Yeah, all these songs were written back in the 90s. Except, except one. one. Except for one, except for one. Just the end of last year. Yeah. That's cool. So it's only been, what, like three years since you've actually kind of reunited? Two. In July is two, yeah. Two years. Wow. What were you guys doing for 22 goddamn (laughs) years? Being married. (laughs) Married? So now none of you guys got families, no kids, no nothing, and you're like, hey, let's be in a band again. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> Empty nesters. Empty nesters with the basement. Nothing to do. Well, I'm glad you guys at least found it, found it within yourselves. <laughs> well, we to, all uh, kind of, uh, except for Jamie, we all kind of hung out even after the band was done. We, you know, Pat right. and I are best friends. Um, I hate his guts, but we love each other. So, but uh, <laughs> it's kind of how it goes. <laughs> and then Mikey, we would always party with Mikey through the years and stuff. But Jamie, he got lost. He came down here. He came down here he to came Provo. Down, he came down to Happy Valley. Behind the Zion Curtain. A little, little changed on everybody. Oh, uh, so. yeah. You, you get sucked into Happy Valley, and I don't know. You just I never joined the back. church. Really? Yeah. Went, went through the temple with my wife. And you're the one that smokes weed. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot to be said about that, folks. <laughs> I haven't been there for four years. Well, um, this would be a really good time to, to give a shout-out to um, the, the fifth member of the, the band that's not here anymore. He left us, unfortunately, a couple months ago. He passed away. And he was our favorite, favorite fan. And uh, sound guy. And, and he was our sound guy for, you know, for us back in the day. And when we started again, he started coming around again. And so to little Brent, love you, guy. Sorry, sorry you're gone. But... Um, well, I'll raise maybe, a mug to that one. What reminded me of that was, so I know this guy, one, uh, this one-way only guitar player. I know him a certain way, which is back in the day, and then just two years ago, we got back together. But at, his, at our friend's funeral, this guy gets up, and oh, my God, do what you do. Do it. Do that. Do that, do that thing you do. Do that. I got up and bared my testimony of the church. Yeah, well, that's the way he was talking, though, man. It tripped me out. Brother and sister about the atonement, and the, the whole atonement thing. I'm sitting there going, what? <laughs> Where is this coming from? Holy I like, crap. I don't know that guy. <laughs> Come on, I know yeah. a lot about the Mormon church. It was a Mormon, you know, a ceremony. Thing. So. Yeah, so. <laughs> it blew my mind. I do, too, believe it or not. <laughs> so. uh, yeah, I, was, anyway. I was seriously maybe a few months shy of going on a mission, you know, yeah. and starting to wear their magic underwear and wow. all that. I, I the didn't Jesus quite jammies. cross that bridge. I was uh, I was almost there. Wow. And I think that that was actually the the breaking point. Where I was like, <laughs> do I really want to start wearing Jesus jammies? <laughs> <laughs> they're very comfortable. Uh, I've had some girlfriends that I've worn there. <laughs> and I, and I, I hear they're mind, fireproof. Um, <laughs> you know, they're all silky and stuff. I wouldn't right? mind maybe boning a chick that was wearing them. <laughs> but I don't want to wear them. <laughs> no, they're, they're, don't they're, not that, t- they're not that sexy. Don't knock me. it till you try it. It's fine. <laughs> they got maybe that butt flap black thing black in the back. Or no. pink. <laughs> right? The same. How'd we get on this subject? <laughs> oh, it was my fault. <laughs> I, I did yeah, that. Yeah, that was you, brother. Let's go back to rock and roll. Anyway, right? All right, well, let's talk in more rocking, huh? <laughs> What's the name of this next tune you got? Uh, the name of the next tune's called Fall in Line. We, uh, actually, Jamie wrote the lyrics to it uh, back in the day because he had just gotten out of jail. Oxbow County Jail, I spent 40 to straight days. But, see, you, you're, you're the conundrum. Yeah, right? <laughs> he he's, bears his testimony, and he just gets out of jail, <laughs> and he's the only one that smokes weed for yeah. him. He's, yeah, it's crazy, man. <laughs> I like this guy. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> so let's have a next song. This is One Way Only. Thank you all for listening. KW Judas. 
And yeah, let's kick it. Fall in line. Fall in line. <laughs> song's all about being in prison, jail, whatever. <laughs> and you wrote it. He wrote it. Oh. Jamie wrote it. Yeah. So how come you I don't want to do the vocals, But the only man. time I've been in jail has been down here. <laughs> how come you don't sing? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone I, just laughs. I, I don't get a microphone. <laughs> they say He's I that guy. like a dead cow. <laughs> He's that guy. I think they're afraid you might bear your testimony. I'm that guy. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's, it's more like the bad fingers on the chalkboard. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Donovan, way to keep that one clean. That right, awesome. you notice that? You, I did that. That's how some bands get famous, you know. Just have that uh, nails on the chalkboard kind of voice. Yeah, yeah. I just I make like, my guitar sing. Look at Smashing Pumpkins. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> either Corgan. you really love yeah. Billy Corgan's voice, no, or you really, really hate yeah, it. Yeah, either little yeah. hate it or hate that's it. nails on the chalkboard. Love some it. people like that sound. Right? <laughs> no, but uh, that's cool. You say you've been in jail, though? <laughs> yeah. 
I got thrown in jail here, down here. Pro well, what'd you do, man? Well, you're not supposed to jump <laughs> railroad tracks in a truck <laughs> while you're drunk. What? Yeah, it was a good time. We went, okay, so a buddy of mine, he was a roommate, actually. He had this four-wheel drive truck. It was pretty badass. Oh, sorry, I said ass. And we went up over <laughs> Guardsman and back down into Midway and just got just drunk to the bejesus, you know? Like, really drunk. That's like, pretty drunk. Like, passed Dude out drunk. But, but he, he got me in the truck, and we were able, and he was driving. And we decided we were going to go jump railroad tracks up there, and we jumped a lot of them. Like, there's a lot of railroad tracks up there. Where was this? Midway? Midway, yeah. Oh, yeah. So anyway, you then just we just jumped tracks. And I, I passed out, and we come down. Provo Cameron Canyon, and he got pulled over in uh, Pleasant Grove, and they like threw us in jail. <laughs> they so pulled that's you what, over in PG. Yeah, and they took us all the way back to Provo. In, well, he was not driving very well, evidently. So was, they fall. Was this like some kind of a high speed chase? Or? No, no. They they caught they caught us. So we got all the jumping all taken care of and done, and then we came right. down. Like, then you then we came down the over. canyon. I passed out. I was asked out against the door and so they pulled him over and i didn't even know we were pulled over until this big cop opened the door and dropped me out on the ground <laughs> you just and then he picked me up and punched me in the face because he thought i was coming at him i'm like dude i'm dead <laughs> drunk man this is the 80s they could do that shit back stuff back then and so oh, they still do they do it even more yeah, right <laughs> and so they took us to jail they took us down here to the provo jail and i had to call my dad and i was Good times. That's really my best. That's the only thing I got for Provo. That's still a pretty Other good story. Other than City Limits though. is awesome. We love coming there. Yeah, City Limits is right across from the police station, so it's close enough, right? <laughs> yeah, right there. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. swear, those guys, you know, like, City Limits probably has uh, an inside foot in the door, you know. Like, they got that cop guy who's always looking out for them. Yeah, that's cool. That's you good. the guy that sits out in the parking lot? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's always going to be a cop there's sitting always out in the parking lot. I was out there in the parking <laughs> lot, and then I realized there was a cop about five feet away. I was like, oh, shit. Because you are still <laughs> right across the street from the police station. Yeah. I've actually been rolled up a few times um, doing shenanigans in the back. Uh, and they were watching us from across the street in the parking lot. You know where that little taco shop is? Oh, yeah. yeah. There wasn't always a taco shop there. <laughs> this time, there was a cop. <laughs> well, all I remember from that back when I got was I was, my dad was pissed, man. He come down and got me. And uh, we went to go to the ATM to get more money to get my buddy out. And I'm standing at the soda fountain filling up a soda at like five o'clock in the morning and I realized my feet were hurting. That's because I had the wrong shoes on. <laughs> they, <laughs> they, they Random. Gave me, they gave me the wrong shoes and I took them. That's the best part. Was, my dad's all, the what do you mean you got the wrong shoes? Some, yeah, they just gave me random other person's yeah. shoes. Yeah. yeah. It was That's awesome. cool. <laughs> <laughs> so we're standing at the door uh, over there. I don't know if you've been to jail over there, but we're standing at the door over there. They're yeah, passing yeah. shoes back and forth asking me if those are the right ones. <laughs> It wouldn't be say so go grab another pair. Finally, I found my shoes. So, yeah, that's the only time I've been arrested, and I don't think I'm going to do that kind of stuff again. Man, and get caught. What is it with authority figures and shoes? I don't know. Man. Really? I lost my shoes at a Primus concert, and I went to talk to the security guys because I watched my shoe actually get thrown up on stage, and they put it inside. I think it was Tim Alexander who was playing. They put it inside his bass drum, you know, inside the little hole they got here. And my cousin was like, dude, that was your shoe. And I'm like, yeah, I thought so. And it's, yeah, they put it in his fucking bass drum. <laughs> and so I thought this is my ticket to actually get to meet the band. I go up to the security guys like, I got to get my shoe. And they're like, no, no, no. Everyone's clearing out. And I'm like, but the drummer's got my shoe. I, I got to get back there. You know? He's like, you need a shoe? That shoe. Take a look at the, because <laughs> this is at the big ass show that they throw for X ninety six back when Primus headlined every one of them, right. and I don't know if there's ever a show that more stuff gets thrown through the air, through the whole damn show. I mean, I think that's why Cake got off the stage is they got hit with a shoe. Yeah, I'm still pissed at uh, Piercy, Stephen Piercy. He he asked for my hat. I was in the front row. Rat. <laughs> Who's one of with? the best shows? Oh, 1989 rat. or something like one. Right, they were in their prime. And I had this pink Floyd hat. It was the coolest freaking hat. 
And he, he's all, here, here. I'm all, what? He's, so I give it to him, and he puts it on. Awesome, this dude's wearing my hat. Stephen Piercy, the lead singer of Rat, one of my favorite bands, wearing my hat. You know what that bitch did? Man, he threw that out in the audience to somebody else, and then I tried to get it back, and the dude's like, well, I'll beat your ass. And, oh. <laughs> Guess I lost my hat. What a dick. I know, what a dick, right? Mm. But at least you don't need a hat to walk. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, they just told me to pick a random shoe off just take know, some the fairgrounds, which take wasn't somebody very hard shoe. to find one. Uh, that's a right. I found the uh, best that's a right. Uh, there's a left about my size. Literally walking in someone else's shoes. It's that's pretty good. queasty if you ask me. I mean, uh, I would never do something like that now. I'm too much of a germaphobe. Yeah. <laughs> I always have been, but back then it was just kind of like, oh, a shoe, which I later wound up throwing out the window on the way home. <laughs> So let's have another song. All right. <laughs> well, let's see. I don't remember who wrote this one. I, uh, I think I wrote the lyrics, but I don't remember where the riff came from. Was that you, Jamie? Mike wrote the oh, Mikey. So it's called... Oh. The drummer wrote this out. one. Yeah, it's called uh, Long Time Coming, and it's basically self-explanatory. <laughs> All right. One Way Only on KWJ. <laughs> Oh, man. 
stage. One way only here on KW Judas Free Radio Provo. Thank you all for listening. So I'm reminded, since we were kind of talking about City Limits, you guys are going to be playing there pretty soon. That's right. Uh, July 14th, and I believe that this show is scheduled to be broadcast July 6th. Yeah. So if you're listening right now, it better be July 6th, goddammit. <laughs> <laughs> or else we did something wrong. Something. Unless this is a rerun, of course. In which case, well, I'm glad you're still listening to KW Tudis on Free Radio Provo. Nice. This is 2018 currently when we are broadcasting and when you guys are going to be playing at City Limits. Unfortunately, we don't really know who else is going to be playing that night. <laughs> Everybody keeps We've bailing on us. What's up with that? Uh, or, um, the crystal failures. clears. I'm, you know, the yeah. vapors. We, we had a lot of bands that were going to be playing. and Until they, they found flight. out we were coming, right? Yeah, I believe we had uh, <laughs> King Diamond and <laughs> Oasis was going to play. All right. Anthrax. Uh, and yeah. um, Hootie and the Blowfish, <laughs> we we had briefly <laughs> agreed, the and they yeah they heard one way only was playing, and they were like, ah oh, damn, we don't want to get showed up. No man. And Fish was like, uh, <laughs> we we play by ourselves. You know, when they heard that you guys were gonna be opening, they're like, nah, uh, that we don't share the stage with anyone. <laughs> so you guys kind of cost me a Fish concert. Bummer. <laughs> Bummer. Neil Diamond. We'd, we'd have come Diamond. to it anyway, even if we didn't. Or King play. Diamond. King, King Diamond. <laughs> yeah, that's King Neil Diamond, Diamond's whatever. brother. <laughs> King Diamond, Neil Diamond. But we're still, we're still going to have a good show, and we're still going to carry on. And even if we got to ask Jimmy Buffett. <laughs> hey, that'd headlines. be fine. Margaritaville, it's here yeah. we come. Then it's still going to be a kick ass time. So that is uh, Saturday, July 14th. Doors at 8, music at 9. City Limits is located at 440 West Center Street in Provo. For anybody listening and would like to attend that show, it's only $5 and you must be 21 plus. And uh, I have actually been talking to a lot of other kick-ass bands that hopefully confirm within the next day or two. Nice. Great. Yeah. Um, last night at City Limits was pretty cool, and everybody was like, yeah, we want to come back. And so there, we like, know hey, the time. You guys should come back in, like, a couple of weeks. <laughs> I know it's kind of soon, but if you're down. The thing is, one of them came clear from Blanding. Last night? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's dedication, and baby. I didn't realize this until, like, we already had everything set up, and it was the night of the show, and they told me that they're driving, like, an hour past Moab. <laughs> to get back on. And they're the headlining act. Oh, God. Wow. Dedication right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right dedication. And at the night, and then the night, they were all smiles and everything. It was still pretty cool. That they better be four one bucks? fast van. I'm telling you, man, that thing's got to be turbocharged. Unless they got a uh, like a Rick and Morty, like a portal gun or something, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Stargate. That's kind of what I figured because they were just a little too stoked to still be at city limits at 1 a.m. <laughs> when they got a five-hour drive ahead of them, and they got paid maybe like 40 bucks. <laughs> yeah, they'll just go in the back parking lot and open up the iris. <laughs> they got that DeLorean thing where they just Marty. <laughs> that's the only way that uh, that's the only way to get around these days, Great especially Scott. if you live in, in Blanding. I would assume. There's that word again, Marty. Blanding. Heavy. Do they really have music down in Blanding? Is that is that, that was the biggest surprise, right? Blanding. That there's actually a band from there <laughs> <laughs> at all, and they were pretty good too. They're called Phaedrus, if you you know if you care. <laughs> But anyways, hopefully we can get them on, and I've asked a couple of bands as well. Either way, everybody listening tonight should be there at City Limits next weekend, July 14th. Absolutely. It, it's a we, Saturday. What else you got to do? We, we, have, uh, we have our CD. If anybody's ever heard of a compact disc, we have that. Oh, yeah. You can those get your very thing. own for a while. Yeah. Back, Put uh, it in your computer and burn it off and give it to all your friends. Don't worry about us. <laughs> <laughs> Five, ten bucks, you know, whatever. <laughs> what sucks is even for the people that still care about CDs, you know, you buy a computer and they don't even come with a CD drive anymore. Right. So yeah. even if you do care, it's like, damn it. And then half the CDs I'll get are from local bands and underground bands who may not have the best quality press CDs. Right. And with these newer ones, you put a CD in there and it doesn't even register it. 
right. he doesn't even get what's going on. It's just like you, you're a CD drive, <laughs> an external CD drive. You have one function you have to do, and you can't even do that. Yeah, the days. but it got your guys a CD. Well, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Um, these guys were nice enough to drop a CD off at the city limits for me to take home and enjoy. And um, when I could figure it out, add to the free radio Provo playlist. Absolutely. Yeah, we're pretty proud of it. Um, we we actually uh, when we got back together a couple of years ago, we weren't we weren't planning on doing that doing a CD or anything, but it came together so fast and so good that we we ran into uh, a guy, Kurt Johnson, awesome uh, sound guy, and he put put it all together for us, so we're pretty proud of it. Down so this Soundwave is Soundwave Studios. Where was this? Soundwave Studios. In Salt Lake? Salt Lake. He knows you. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, he's, he a, know, he's he, a guitar player to Ariel. Yeah. Guitar player in Ariel. Oh, word. Had his own studio for a long time. As soon as I brought you up, he's like, I know that guy. I think he's jammed <laughs> down there. So. Yeah, I mean, I get around. I'm like a town <laughs> bike, sort of. You guys know a lot of bands that, that I know. Yeah. I mean, you've mentioned already. Uh, the band on my shirt. Yeah. And uh, Sugarbone. We actually recorded with Chris a little while ago. He's an interesting dude. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, and it's funny that I still see Sugarbone's name around. And I'm like, ah, there's that guy. He's another <laughs> one that's never going to quit. Yep. And what's, what else is funny is so many people I know have been in Sugarbone, <laughs> whether it was for a long or a uh, brief amount of time. True. We've even had a lot of people on this show who have been in that band for, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, however long it was. <laughs> Know, but should yeah, I, should I try out for them just to you know say I've been in Sugar Bowl? Sure, just to join the club, <laughs> just to join, join them for a minute. The Sugar yeah, Bowl club. Maybe we all should. Just I'm sure if you called him, just be like, "Hey, dude, you need <laughs> members?" Uh, he always is looking for somebody. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I was wondering on that note, you guys kind of did you ever hear of a band called Pennies for Beggars? It was about ten years ago. These guys were were kicking it, so you Local? guys might not have been back. Local here. As a band, yeah, they were from Provo, oh. but I don't know. You just have kind of a similar sound and everything and whatnot. They were some really good friends of mine, and then their singer died. Well, that's not <laughs> so, cool. So yeah, but cool. you know, that's what happens, right? Way, way to tell us that story, down downer, Debbie down. No, um. <laughs> <laughs> well, here you got you got something more positive to say, man. <laughs> nothing. I got you. Nothing. <laughs> you already I talked about your dead friend earlier. I know. So right? I just figured I was the one. that was me. There's a lot of death that goes on in KW Judas. Like one of our first shows, that was like the main theme. Is so. What's the most fucked up thing you've watched on tour? And they actually watched. I think it was two people who accidentally set themselves on fire what? at a gas station Jeez. in their own car. Not good. And it was. You couldn't even tell if they did it on purpose or not, <laughs> like if they were just on something and they did it on accident. Yeah. We get a lot of interesting stories. I'll bet that's something you only do journey. once, right? Yeah, I, like, I, I was going to say. If you make uh, it through that, that, you probably are like, I don't think I'm going to do that again. You better do that right the first time because yeah, there right? is no repeating that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Was, Our, was, we had a band member that did that. Oh, Jeez. Yeah, and he, <laughs> he still... Lived, but they pulled the plug very he shortly after. He looks like after. Dr. Demento. Kind of. You guys know who Dr. Demento is? Yeah. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anybody who doesn't know who Dr. Demento is. But, yes. Time for number one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that we've gotten all the death and gore and people burning out of the way. Wait, uh, there's one more. How many fish have you guys punched? <laughs> there's one, there's, no, right? <laughs> what's the last one? We got one more. I was, I was, I was going to say this last night, but they turned the mics off. But I just wanted to say rest in peace, Benny Paul. Holy crap, that was a shocker. Whoa, 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 what? The, yeah, Vinnie Paul passed away a couple days ago. I didn't know that. Yeah. Days ago, man. Yep. How? What you you, you didn't know that? No, I didn't. Yeah, yeah, for sure, dude. Maybe I'm not on Facebook enough. <laughs> No, that's where it's I found been it. on I Facebook. Like, I haven't been days. on Facebook for like two days, man. I, uh, Jesus, that's what happens. I'm on yeah. Facebook for two days, and Vinnie Paul fucking dies. Yeah, yeah. Not uh, uh, yeah, they don't know what what the cause of death was yet. So I, I mean, guess I should never get off Facebook. <laughs> I don't want any more <laughs> rock stars. Just now. just buy a separate computer just for Facebook. You know, right. Just leave it running. Even when I'm gone. Just yeah, exactly. So everybody knows that I'm always there. How? So we didn't. They didn't determine the cause of death. 
Huh. Well, damn, that's news to me. Right here on the air, right here on KW Judas. For those of you out there who also didn't know, Vinnie Paul is dead. He's with his brother. Yep. Well, you guys want to play a happy song now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this, uh, this next song's pretty happy. Okay, so I got to tell a story about this song. Back in the 90s, I don't know if you guys remember, but there I was, was a... In, I was actually in jail when this happened. Yeah. <laughs> Again? Yeah. I was watching... <laughs> no, this time. is when I was in the jail and I was watching <laughs> this happen. So, but, uh, <laughs> so there was this white... Jail there, or church? <laughs> there, there, was, there was this white Bronco running around with uh, Mr. O.J. Simpson in the back of it. And I remember watching it on TV and I was like, that dude's a total stalker. Total stalker. <laughs> I, I, he was guilty in my mind from... Right, right from the get-go. I'm like, that dude's... And, of course, it didn't work out that way, but that's, that was where I was at. And so I started putting that, this song together. It's called Stalker. Before he was ever even convicted. But it's and about but it's about. But he wasn't yeah. convicted. Well, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, tried. Uh, and, 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 and exonerated. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the, uh, this was my interpretation of what was going on back then before he went to trial because it was just such a crazy I mean well, I don't know if you guys remember that but that was oh, like I the, remember it. the biggest craziest like the I first I was still pretty young but I definitely remember all that shit yeah. going on. that was like the first my first dose of of like how bizarre the media can be you know yeah and uh, so that's why I put it together well alright what's the name of this one it's called Stalker Stalker by One Way Only KW Judas Free Radio Provo Here I come!
If I get caught Some stalker Then they may hang me Some high. stalker Yeah, I could die Some stalker Hey, hey, hey Stop, 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 stop. Oh, it's one way only here on KW Judas Free Radio Provo. We have a little over 15 minutes left. I know, it just seems like time, time flies. flies when you're. Uh, so each one of out. us have um, favorite songs that we do. That one is absolutely my most favorite song. It turns me into a different person. Yeah, it turns you into a stalker. <laughs> yeah, it really does. <laughs> I, start thinking, I start thinking, man, if I could get away with it, I mean, is that really a thing I could do? So you just kind of sing that song to yourself every time you're... I do. <laughs> you're creeping through your neighborhood I do. on your way home from work. I, I, usually on the train, dude. <laughs> i get on the train and I'll be like looking at somebody. Oh, I got a story about the train, but I'm not going to tell it. But anyway, um, <laughs> I will. I'll get on the train. I'll be like, I wonder if I could stalk that dude. <laughs> I'll That's bet he wouldn't even know thing it. you admit on, the, on public radio. Well, you know... You, I'm a people watcher, and so sometimes you see people where you can tell that they have absolutely no situational awareness at all. You know right. That's I mean? uh, true. Like the train could fly off the track, and they wouldn't notice it, you know, they, they, until they're laying in a pile of their own vomit or something, right? And so I do that. I will be like, I wonder if I could stalk that dude for a couple of days, and he wouldn't ever even know. <laughs> right? That sounds like most of the population of Tooele. <laughs> I know, I, I live out in Tooele, so it's, it's like, yeah, I see things out there that it's just like, it leaves you going. <laughs> <laughs> what do you what do in, in Tooele? Why the, <laughs> I mean, what do you do in Tooele? Uh, that sounds about right. Well, you remember the motor home off uh, Christmas vacation? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Me and my family live in one. Yeah, we're, we are the Eddie of the, you know. It's fun stuff. That's at, least, an RV. at least you got a place to play That's your drums. That's an RV, Clark, not a motorhome. Crapper's full. No, see, this is, this is the thing that sucks. Crapper's full. These guys can practice whenever they want. I have to go down to Jamie's house where my drum kit is ah. to practice, and I don't ever get any practice time in, so I'm like, I'm kind of stuck in a rut right now. I, I play his drum <laughs> kit more than he does. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> see, exactly. That's the thing about being a drummer. Yep. I mean, it's really... I, w I don't even want to say twice the pain in the ass. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like five times yeah, the pain it's like in the five, ass. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even I mean, just I to have a place to take, do it. I could take sticks home and a practice pad, but it's not this. Oh, no, no, yeah. hell no. So anybody that anybody that has a drummer should consider themselves lucky. You know, the other thing about drummers is is they, they, they their whole their whole life is based around timing, right? That yeah. dude has never been on time to anything. Yeah. I, I, no, because they got more shit yesterday. to pack than you guys. The last time yeah. we were at City Limits, <laughs> I called him on the phone at nine oh five, and I was like, "Dude, uh, where'd you go?" He was across the street eating a burger, man. I'm like, "We're we're on it five minutes ago, dude." <laughs> it's because there's a good fucking burger joint just right across the street, yeah, and yeah. they close that at is, like nine thirty. That is true. You right. gotta get <laughs> that is you gotta true. get in there right when you pull into city limits <laughs> if you want food. Yeah, get your I, shit out of the car and be like, "All right, I'm going to Tommy Burger, guys." Yeah. He yeah, was, he I was went over there after He was we the played. smart one. He was the smart then one. Then we played the show, and then I got to eat my yeah. burger. And, and it was and cold, you guys were all real still jealous. really, really, really good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love Tommy. Was that it, Tommy Burger? Mm. Yeah, those I, guys kicked I ass. ended up over that little Mexican place just right across the parking lot. Yeah, the one we were talking about. Yeah. Where the cop usually. I was hang waiting out. for my food, and they are all dancing, playing Bra Brazilian music, and I'm like, oh, man, what did I get myself into? Those guys are cool. They sell they brain cool. tacos they and were. heart it was tacos. A, it was actually good food. Intestines. And I was surprised. Yeah, nice. they got all sorts of stuff that you would only eat on Halloween, but you never guessed burrito. it was Halloween food. <laughs> I love that place. Yeah. If, if ever you're feeling adventurous, and they still do really well. You know, in the summertime, they're open till like 11. Yeah. So yeah. when you guys play there again, we should all just... Jet over there. And yeah, run over there. <laughs> eat some brains. What's with the crazy? Eat some brains. That's right. What's with a crazy shop about two doors east? The chicken. Of, the uh, big chicken. No, past the chicken. What's oh. that other little shop? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what they is just that? Like having a big cock. 
Whoa. Yeah, yeah. no, no. Right the on. one next Why to the pawn shop. Like a little, <laughs> is it a little coffee shop or what is that? Place? Oh, no, that place changes. It's like hemp. What it is a lot. I forget what it's like, Colossus or something. Yeah, there you go. Colossus. That's what it was. I don't even know what a Colossus is, but like, it sounds oh, tasty. Look. It's not the ride at Lagoon. They just <laughs> <laughs> They're just never open when I'm around. You know, I'm always there like after hours, so I have to go to Tommy Burger or the Brain Taco Shop. Yeah. Or, um, or uh, Tommy Burger. you know, there's that Rocky Mountain drive through on the other side. That's and good. they're open That's a good. half hour later than Tommy Burger. That place is good. Oh, yeah, that yeah. place kicks ass. They've got like a mushroom Swiss. Ew, Damn. Yuck. You said the M word. That's gross. Oh, you don't like scubes, bro? No, no, Mike. Mike don't like. I've actually offered him shrooms, like <laughs> real shrooms. <laughs> you know, mushrooms. Of course, the, the guy who goes to he, church. He turned me down. Mushrooms. <laughs> I'm, I'm one of those people. You could hold me hostage with a mushroom. You know, come at me with that thing. <laughs> here, give me I've your money. I'll make you eat this. I've seen ah, your mushrooms, here, dude. It. It's like sticks and stems and crap. <laughs> hey, they're good <laughs> stuff, man. <laughs> what if it was just if there's the sports? Shake, if, if there's mushroom shake, yeah, the that's shake. what that's what he's gets. <laughs> yeah, just take the spores. You'll, spores. you'll still have a good time. <laughs> hey, they work. It's all that counts. <laughs> we know oh. he's on them too because one eye's this way, the other one's that way. Like, yeah, I haven't done that in a while. It's been like two weeks. When 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 we come to band <laughs> practice and, and Jamie looks like Steve Buscemi, then you know he's been doing shrooms. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny is I can see that. You know, I can actually you know, <laughs> half, halfway through the song, I'll just quit playing, and they'll be looking at me like, "What's up?" I'll be like, "Oh, I was done." <laughs> la, la, la. <laughs> I thought it was over. Oh, I got man. there before you did. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we we already kind of talked about uh, you know smoking or drinking a little bit before you play. That's whatever. I mean, that's mandatory for some people. It's mandatory for most of my bands and bandmates. But when you are under the influence of a psychedelic <laughs> and trying to play music, <laughs> it doesn't it, work out it, so it well. It can get interesting. It can get really <laughs> cool, but you don't want to do it for a show. That's the thing. I learned that the hard no way. No show, just the basement. <laughs> Just where, the, where uh, the cool lights are. <laughs> only well, only a few weeks ago, like I said, uh, this is actually maybe a month ago when we played up in Ogden, and the wizard just kind of showed up <laughs> and obliged, and uh, I was like, okay, this probably won't really kick in until after we're done playing, right? I mean, it usually takes a good hour for papers little papers <laughs> to kick in. We call them stamps. Yeah, little stamps. <laughs> and I only took a little little stamp <laughs> right before we played. And um, <laughs> yeah, that stamp it got interesting. That Next stamp kicked you know in a little too quick. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing you know, you're playing <laughs> Way Fleetwood Mac songs. And, <laughs> and I, I can't really remember exactly how That's when went, Jimi Hendrix comes out and me. <laughs> <laughs> He starts playing left-handed and stuff. It's kind of fun. You just flip the guitar upside yeah. down. <laughs> I bet you could do it. I watched a guy sign his own name with his feet. <laughs> if he could do that... Then you can do that upside down. Wow. Sure. Um, <laughs> perception influenced. <laughs> One thing about Jamie, though, is he's on fire when we get on stage. Yeah, when you we're don't need any help with the uh, psychedelic. When we're jamming uh, down in the room, uh, every once in a while, he'll just, like, Maybe go a little too far. There is and, no too and then, far. And then, it's rock and, and roll, man. And, and, and we're all going one direction, and he's going a different. And he, he'll always look at us like, we're, "What? What?" <laughs> but you when we get on stage, man, he's on fire. That's a term that we call guitarded. <laughs> guitarded, yeah, that's I, pretty I'm good. I'm sitting there playing Metallica, and they're looking at me like, "Dude, where where are you going with that?" <laughs> the guitarist is always the one that'll just be going off, and everyone's <laughs> just staring at him like. And he's like, oh, cool, everyone's looking at me. <laughs> and they're like, we're looking at you because we're waiting you to start the watch song. And shut the hell up. Yeah, when are you going to start the song? And they're all just, he, yeah, everyone's looking at me, man. They, watch me do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's guitarded. Every guitarist does it. I even play guitar in one of my bands, and I'm not very good. But I get a guitar in my hands, and I get guitarded. <laughs> I get guitarded face, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we call him the one-eyed Jack. 
<laughs> eh, especially after a few you beers. Can t- <sighs> you can tell when he's in the zone because that one eye goes closed and he's just <laughs> he get the guitar rolling look. through it, baby. <laughs> rolling through it. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Watch out when I close that one eye. <laughs> That's when you know Jimi Hendrix is coming out. Yeah, exactly. He's exactly. coming out the other eye. <laughs> well, we got about, oh, damn, eight minutes. All right. Yeah, let's hear your song about you. All right, let's do it. I mean, is there a story behind that, or you just really, really like those words? <laughs> there is a pretty good story. It was actually, it. I had been playing this song since I was like 15. And it I just pl- wasn't named. I, I played in a thrash band, and they kept telling me, no, dude, that song isn't heavy enough because we're like Metallica, Megadeth. You know, this is the 80s. We're thrash. And so then when I started playing with these guys, I ripped it out one day, and they're like, dude, this is our song right here. It really came yeah. natural, too, because um, <laughs> I'd been joking around with Pat about uh, h- how do I put this without sounding strange, but... We always had butt jokes. Because you are strange, man. Yeah, yeah you're the stalker We always had guy. butt jokes, and, 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 and it was like, Stalking dude, there's a sign. I talking about my butt, man. There's a sign that, that says one way only right here <laughs> on my back, so just don't quit talking about the butt jokes. It's one way only, right? And, and then when the song, when, he's, when Jamie started doing the riff, that was just in my head. One way only. I get people singing that now. <laughs> it's really cool. When we're out in the bars, I'll, I'll I'll get it. By the time by that last verse, I can I can be out there just making people sing it. So it worked well. Well, uh, yeah. One way only playing. One way only on KW Judas Free Radio Provo. Thank you for listening. <laughs>
Hey, kid, uh, what's one? new? Oh, uh, uh, nothing much, Derp and Schlee guy. I just, wait, wait, hold on. Aren't you supposed to be telling me that? I mean, you know, like, what's new from Derp and Schlee and try and sell me some ridiculous product or service that makes no sense? Well, yeah, but can't I just check in my favorite little compadre and ask what's kicking every now and then? Uh, oh, why would you do that? Because I really do care. No, you don't. You're constantly harassing me. It's endless mental and emotional torment, always being haunted by some sadistic, relentless spokesperson I, I, who I'm pretty sure only I can hear. It, it, it's to the point where I'm seeing a therapist. They're telling all sorts of different pills on me. And none of them do anything. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, young queef boy. That's why this next Derpenschley product is on the house. What? This one's on the house, dear boy. No purchase necessary, because Durbinchley really does care. Oh, wait, what is it? Why, my boy, it's a tube sock full of dog shit. What the hell, Durbinchley guy? It's Doberman. What am I supposed to... You can hit people with it. I, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you! Oh, <laughs> nonsense. Brought to you by Durbinchley. And remember, if it doesn't say Durbin, it's not Durbinchley. We'd like to thank you for joining us for One Way Only on KWG's Free Radio Provo. We now return you to our regular free radio programming. <laughs>